Um, hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to talk about financial analysis and various different types of financial analysis. So financial analysis is uh, uh, it's done for various reason and like buying the stock of the company could be one of the major reason for doing a financial analysis. So. Um, I will consider horizontal and vertical analysis in this video and I may talk a little about other different kind of uh, financial analysis as well. So yeah, financial analysis is done for various uh, purposes mm -hmm. like to find the, the financial position of the company, to know about the uh, income situation of the company, how the company is making its income and it also um, is done for comparing two or more than two company a company a same company in different time frame like year 2021 and year 2022 and for other various reasons like for finding the leverage growth and many more so so over here I'm going to talk in depth about vertical and horizontal analysis as compared to other so um okay so this is the data that i have extracted from the internet it is a uh, data of um restaurant company probably because there are food sales and beverages sales over here whereas there is also a food purchase cost and the beverages purchase cost it is a income statement as you can see income and income and uh, expenses over here and the net profit at the end so if you don't know about the income statement it is a financial statement so there are three um big financial statement no uh, yeah there are three big uh data of the financial statement which are balance sheet you can see over here which are balance sheet income statement and cash flow statement basically income statement address about um no basically income uh, balance sheet sorry basically balance sheet will address about the financial position of the company like how the company is addressing its uh, assets and the liabilities uh, and various uh, other things like um, the current assets, current liabilities and many more. So it uh, address about the financial position of the company whereas income in each statement will address about how well the company is doing its operation or earning its income and addressing its expenses and whether the company is making profit or loss or how the company is operating in general and cash flow statement will address about the cash inflow and outflow from the company um, so in balance it has two sides which uh, the one of the side is called assets and the other one is uh, called liability plus equity income statement uh, there are income and expenses on cash flow actually cash flow in the company cash um, can inflow or outflow in three different sections which are investing activities from investing activities operating activities and um, the last one is I believe it's financing activity so there are three sections from which the cash would be considered in a company so yeah and in this video I'm going to talk uh, more about uh, vertical and horizontal analysis and it uh, we can do vertical and horizontal analysis in uh, all three of this uh, financial statement so over here we have income statement because you can see over here there are various income and we got the total income and there's uh, cost of goods sold or cost of sales is the same same, same thing 
and we get the gross profit and after subtracting the operating expenses over here all these operating expenses this is the sum of total operating expenses after subtracting yeah operating expenses we'll get the net profit slash loss so um first of all let's say this is the data of company one uh, okay company one and this is the data of company two of the same year let's say 2022 2022 so yeah you can see over here we have data of two company company one and company two of uh, same interval of time same fiscal year as well oh we could uh, imagine that and and yeah uh, for a restaurant company it is it is uh, data for restaurant companies so food sales and beverage sales are the major operation of the company because they serve food and beverages to its customer so cost of sales or cost of goods sold include uh, those costs which are the cost of inventory or the cost of inventory sold or the cost of those materials which the company have to buy to in order to operate its operation like in order to operate in general like to sell food Russian company have to purchase food to sell beverages the Russian company have to purchase beverages like and um, purchasing um, let's say a fan or a purchasing uh, let's see a light bulb might not be the major concern or the major thing and if company do that then those product will not be considered as the cost of sales or cost of uh, goods sold those product which the company sells to its customer are called cost of goods sold so in a Russian company food sales and beverage sales uh, yeah food purchase and beverage purchase are considered as cost of goods sold or the cost of sales so adding this we'll get the total cost of sales and gross profit is over here so now I'm going to do um, vertical analysis analysis over here of let's say company one so uh, I'm going to address first of all let's make all these three sections because um, yeah we need this three or maybe more I'll select like few of them few of the uh, column and I'll oh it's already in percent okay let's go let's where is the percent but it's already in the percent over here okay so I'm gonna hide this ribbon bar so over here uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide food sales by the total income so we could get a certain percent so this means that the 51 percent of total income comes from the food sales which is the operation of the company which is a pretty good thing so I'm gonna drag this down and uh, divided by zero or not okay so I'm going to delete all of this because that was not the thing that I was expecting okay so I'm going to make this cell E10 which is this one which I have like the data of 70,000 uh, a constant cell and I'm gonna hit enter so when I'm going to drag this when I drag this down over here yeah the cell will remain constant in every or more okay so in the first one you can see the 51 percent of total income was from food sales but as 34 percent was from beverage sales and the remaining 14 percent was from other income so other income so it, it could include anything like the company could sell its uh, old furniture I mean for a restaurant company selling of furniture is not the main operation food and beverages sales are the main operation but company could do that and on few income so it comes under other income so you can see here the highest uh, percent was on food sales which is a good thing if the per highest percent was on income sale then that could indicate that company might not be doing well or the company is not good at its operation 
and things like that. So I'm going to do the same thing over here on the cost of sales. So food purchase will depend on the cost of goods sold or the cost of sales. Oh, 70, that's very high. So you can see here like the total cost of sales is 21 and 70% of its cost was uh, from the food purchase. So if the company, uh, let's say address its uh, food supplier, you know, if the company like change its, sub change its supplier or purchase the product from another supplier or in a cheaper price, basically, then this 70% could be reduced and there would be drastic, there could be, you know, changes in the total cost of sales which could uh, re reduce the cost of the company you know which will increase the gross profit at the end so gross profit will depend on the total income so what I, d what I did over here was uh, dividing the gross profit di by total income so this means uh, it is a gross profit margin so what I mean is gross profit margin um, let's go to image section okay so you can see over here revenue minus cost of goods sold which is which is a gross profit divided by revenue is a gross profit margin and if you multiply it or if you uh, like take it in a percent you can see over here gross profit divided by revenue it basically means how much uh, gross profit is generated um, yeah how much gross profit is generated as per the revenue so yeah 69 percent is it yeah if I let's say not uh, if the company one made hundred dollar then if the company made hundred dollar uh, it's, it's on percent okay if the company make hundred dollar, then like, the company have to pay for food purchase and beverage purchases, and at the end the company will have sixty nine. It's a gross profit, not a net profit. So I'm I will go over here. I will divide the wages, but it is operating expenses, and I'll divide the wages by operating expenses and make that cell constant. I'm going to drag this down up to here so you can see the wages section has the highest percent which is 61.4 as compared to others and, and you know this uh, section is always 100% because it's um, let's go to the cell it means like dividing the same cell by the same cell so it's 1 multiplied by 100 is always 100 so it's 100% so you can see here the highest percent is the wages so the company has to consider the wages if in an annual report comp company consider the wages then it could be really good thing and uh, for example I mean like 0.4 percent it was from the phone so if the company monitor its uh, phone calls and expenses on the phone furthermore then it um, that's not that's not going to be more effective even if the company manages to make it zero percent you know even if the company can, could do like would be even if the company uh, become able to do that there will only be like a little change in the total operating expenses yeah and there will be uh, like a little change in net profit section so wages is the major section where the company should focus on so the net profit like the gross profit net profit depends on the sales or the total income yeah so at the end of the year 2022 the company had the profit of 30 percent in its pocket so um there's a tax as well but we don't do the calculation for the tax in vertical analysis because the tax is always on the person let's say Mm, for a restaurant company, let's say the thirty percent of tax is deducted from the net profit. So you can see over here thirty, no three six, sorry six thousand three hundred and one point five dollar 
is the let's say it, it's a, the, all the data are in dollars so six thousand three hundred and one point five dollar was the profit so if I like tax depend on the net profit if I do this then it will be 30% yeah because the net profit over here the net profit mm, sorry then um, the tax amount tax is 30% of the taxable amount yeah so it's not necessary to do tax over here sometimes the company could make loss and at that uh, condition the company do not have to pay the tax they might have tax uh, benefit which means the company um like might have to might will get a benefit of pay, paying less tax or no tax in the upcoming year if they if the company made a profit so you can see here the company won so the highest section was in here 70 percent yeah this is how we do the vertical analysis and let's do the same thing in company two so basically i'm going to do all this step again yeah the food purchase is 59 percent in for the company too okay so you can see 21 percent of total income was uh, the net profit for the company too whereas the 30 percent was for the company one this means the company one is uh, the company one is making a good decision or maybe good uh, like a wise expenses and he he's like the company one is um, able to make a higher net profit but um okay let's go to income section so this is good this is good everything is good over here and so comparing two companies by doing vertical analysis like this is not the best thing because we are we can compare the, the, the data of the same company of the same year like doing like vertical analysis you know like vertically analyzing the data could be the good thing so but even even if like considering those things like you can see 14 percent of the income are from the other income for company one whereas the only five percent is from the other income for the company two you know like the company two has made the higher total income yeah the company two has made the higher total income and the majority of the income was from food sales and then by visa sales and then it was from the other income and it's only 5.2 for the other income but for company one is 14 percent for the other income even though the company one makes it lower total income low total income as compared to the company two the company one was able to make higher profit uh, 30 percent of the profit which is 21,000 for company two even if the company two was able to make 97 percent of the income let's say there are more customer in the company two and the company two is able to make 97 thousand of, of total income or sales but uh, the net profit is only eight thousand two hundred and sixty eight so you can clearly see the company one is better at better at uh, managing its expenses you can see 30,000 and 15,000 um, yeah there is a significant amount of changes in the uh, up expenses of the, in, in the company one you can see uh, there's only 17,000 of expenses in the wages section which is a 61 percent but for company two 21,000 which is higher than 17,000 17, but it's only the 55% of 
the total operating expense. So that means the company one is doing better at uh, op uh, managing its operating expenses. So let's do, yeah, that's, that's how you do the vertical analysis and let's do horizontal. Um, so how do I say it? like, for horizontal analysis, um, okay, so let's write over here, I'll write company, I'll write comp one and comp two. So, um, the comp one or uh, comp one means the company one and the comp two means company two. The size of the cell was small, so I did this. Okay, what's happening? Okay, fine. Um, so, so what? Um, what I'm really going to do is like I'm going to take the differences of these two data. After let's say after this company of these two company and I'm going to divide it by the best company let's say company one is the best not BES the best I mean BASC base company so yeah what I really mean is I'll give it bracket so that okay let's say company one is a base company so minus I'll put this data and I'll close the bracket and you'll get the difference of these two uh, data and I'm gonna divide the difference by the base company so I'll get the percent of difference I mean like uh, minus 44 so if the data is in minus then that means the value of um, the company 2 is higher I mean like 52 is higher when 52 is high by 44% you know like the differences of these two company is significant you can calculate by using a calculator things like that you know and 52 is 44 percent higher than 36 so i'm going to drag this down and you can see here 50 percent which is in positive that means the company one has higher data like company one has made um its other income 50 percent higher profit so yeah 5000 10000 so that means Company one had been made uh, fifty percent higher, uh, more than company two, more than the base year. Yeah, that's what it means. I'm gonna drag this down to the net profit. So, so I'm gonna delete this divided by zero error which was over here as well oh well, there's no data over here and the food preparation so there's an error over here so I'm gonna delete that this could this things could happen you know s sometime so you can see the company one so let's only go to the main section let's not talk about every spot so in total income you can see the company uh, it's in minus so company 2 has made higher profit which is 38.6% high than the base year than uh, the company one so you can see 70,000 was the profit to no sorry total income whereas uh, 97,000 was the total income or total revenue or total sales you can say those things as well let's say total revenue or total income over here uh, and yeah I've already said I guess we can do this two kind of uh, analysis on all of this state uh, financial statement balance it income statement and cash flow so it depends on how you want to analyze the company and yeah that's how you or you can do this kind of analysis in specific section as well like assets only or maybe like um, liabilities only and things like that um, yeah and over here five point oh, it's a gross profit so 
gross profit is high in company one so that means what it really means is like from this data like 5.6 percent we can assume that we can consider that the company one has higher company one has higher gross profit and lower total income I mean like the company one has low total income as compared to company two but high gross profit as compared to company two that means company two have to consider its food purchase you know, uh, they have to they probably might have to like change their supplier or buy the uh, the cost of goods you know at lower price at, or at the cheap price and things like that this is the main uh, error or analysis you know if we do financial analysis then we could get this kind of data and yes in this demo data we you can say we can say that um, company two have to consider uh, its food purchase and beverages purchase and if you see over here 59 and 40 so company have uh, company two have to consider food purchases at as at first you know because 30,000 is higher than 20,000 it's a simple thing to consider to to analyze and let's go down to the operating expenses is high in company 2 as well it's in minus okay and 60% oh that's a very much of difference 60% is very high so let's 60% high in company 1 so company 1 has made the profit the higher net profit of 60% so definitely company 1 is better than company 2 at, at managing its cost of purchase and ma at managing its other expenses right even though it's making low work um, this section even if the company one is not performing good at the total sales or total income it's doing better at other um, yeah that's it for horizontal and vertical analysis so I okay let's uh, view other thing as well so over here there are various types of financial analysis in this website and um, okay so I did vertical and horizontal and Le leverage means uh, it address about um, like loan or the debt like yeah, vertical this is a leverage so um, yeah debt equity ratio how well the debt or how much the debt should be as compared to the equity debt by EBTA so it means that earn EBITDA means earning before interest interest tax depreciation and amortization so this will consider how well the debt is um, managed like how much debt should be managed or how well the debt is managed and you know if we take debt then the earnings should be higher or earnings should cover the interest you know so for that like how well the uh, interest could be covered EBIT uh, it also means earning before interest and tax divided by interest so DuPont analysis is really a great thing you can research this in on the internet so leverage analysis is based on debt section or the loan section debt section actually and uh, yeah over here in the picture you can see as well assets uh, in a balance sheet assets is always equal to equity plus debt and uh, financial leverage is uh, the consideration of debt section and how well the debt should be managed and how much debt is uh, a healthy debt and things like this so growth rate means how the growth of the company like not only company growth of every sections everything you know what uh, reg like regression analysis like f it also used for forecasting like if in few years if the company is doing better than that forecast the company could do better in the coming year as well if like taking technology and other thing constant and things like that if the technology wasn't like highly changed 
things like that. Uh, revenue, you can say uh, this is a linear regression, right? Yeah. Number of radio ads and revenue. Yeah. If the ad is ad was increased, number of ad was increased, then the revenue was increased. So there is a direct relationship. If one thing increased, then other thing increased as well. So that's a hundred. The revenue was fifteen thousand. When the ad was increased to one fifty on the radio, the revenue was increased as well. So this is um, like a it says growth rate, but you can understand this. Uh, probability and profit sorry profitability analysis will analyze the profit profitability is type of income statement okay so like gross mark, gross margin we have already done this um, uh, gross margin okay over here so we have already done gross margin over here and there's net profit margin this is the net profit margin this one is a gross profit margin that's how you consider gross profit margin and EB, EBITDA margin and EBIT margin, net profit margin. Yeah, this are the thing. These are the profitability analysis. And this will also consider how much cost. Um, yeah, like we have already done this over here. Like how much cost is a healthy cost and where the cost are occurred higher. And liquidity analysis will consider the care like the ab ability of the company to convert its um let's say assets to cover its liabilities and it's basically on in current assets and current liabilities yeah so current ratio means a current uh, assets divided by current liabilities as test is that um dividing like we have to subtract current assets. We have to sorry. We have to subtract inventory from the current assets, and dividing it by current liabilities, and we'll get how much assets can do we have. So, uh, what does so current asset basically means those assets the company, those assets which the company can convert um, into quick cash. I uh, let's say into a liquid liquid assets you know it so it get converted into a quick assets so yeah cash ratio or cash out ratio same thing networking capital so this means um uh, let's go to the actual sheet so if this is a if this is a real company you know to earn to operate the company it needs a working capital of how much like let's say 27 for a company one it need 27,700 and twenty one thousand nine twenty one thousand two hundred and ninety five you know like despite of not considering the total link these two are the data these two are the cash that we need to run the company so yeah networking capital so how much capital we need or how much expenses do we have to make for a company to work so networking capital means those kind of efficiency analysis is very important um efficiency analysis will analyze the efficiency of like assets turnover ratio so this means how much as for example i'll give you an example like if uh if a person buys uh, let's say iphone iphone and started to flame and uh, flame like start to make a recording in iphone and yeah and then he start to sell sell it or maybe he started doing a YouTube so um, so that he could earn a money so as a turnover ratio will um, consider how much money how much uh, value is made by using that assets so the let's say iPhone was bought for thousand dollar and he made like thirteen dollar per month so it means thirteen divided by the value of no sorry the the cost of the assets so yeah it means how much money the assets make divided by how much money what how much cost the asset was of yeah i basically mean this one like net sales divided by average total cost or like for assets turnover ratio this is the formula but for fixed assets turnover ratio 
net sales divided to fixed assets for a cash conversion ratio same thing inventory uh, turnover ratio same thing you know like inventory so this means um let's say okay let's go to the example inventory so you can see if per, uh, food purchase and beverage purchases the company have to put this purchase in a like food storage you know like for storing the food so they have to store these things as an inventory so how quickly the company can change this inventory into a cash or change this inventory or sell this inventory and make some income or cash that will be determined or that will be analyzed by using an inventory turnover ratio cash flow like i've already said cash flow like cash inflow and cash outflow of the company so yeah there's very, like operating cash flow from the operating section for example like these two are the operating cash flow over here because it's a restaurant company and these two income are from the cash flow yeah the free cash flow cash flow um yeah, yeah. uh the cash flow has three sections like i've said already i guess like operating activities over here this is the operating activities this two one and this other income could include other thing as well so yeah operating activity, investing activity company could like earn some money or invest in invest that earn money in other section and earn for the money or may do some kind of investing activities you know financial activities like um like maybe this this money was from selling uh, a furniture something like that you know are they it's not the operation of the company the main operation was this too this is not the operation of the company so this comes under other income you know financial activities investing activities operate. and they are various yeah cash these are a few examples you can see common example of cash flow analysis include um but yeah cash flow address basically about cash you can see cash is a king <laughs> Cash flow basically address how cash inflow and outflow are made. It tells a lot about um, the company as well. Return on sales, like you know, in like here, uh, return on equity, return on assets, or IRR, internal rate of return, you know, dividend yield, and capital gain. Yeah, yeah IRR, internal rate of return, accounting rate of ARR, accounting rate of return. So return on equity, like. How much return do he get on equity? It's considered as returning. Return on assets, like I've said, like iPhone, like while buy, um, when a person buys an iPhone and he made few amount of money, then how much uh, money was made on I Like how much money does that phone had made, like return on assets, things like that, uh, return on invested capital, so dividend yield basically means like if um, let's say if I bought a stock for three hundred dollar, and at the end of year or, or at the end of quarter, you know, at, let's say at the end of a specific period of time, the company paid me few like let's say ten ten dollar. Then the dividend yield means like how much dividend I get as per the money that I have invested. It's not on book value it's on the money that i have invested so dividend yield means uh, it's a yield of dividend how much money i made on my investment the internal rate of return accounting evaluation analysis you know, uh, valuing the company some company has a higher value some company has a lower value and they are very like cost approach you know some company like they need a high cost to build and things like that so there are various approaches of doing a valuation of an assets or a company or anything like valuation is all about addressing the value so relative uh, comparable analysis yeah you can search this this is really an interesting topic actually um it's called intrinsic value yeah discounted cash flow analysis these are some of the way how the valuation the company or valuation of the assets like a land building let's say you bought a building um the build, like 40 years old building 
So let's say, how can you calculate the value of the building or the value of the land where the building was built and things like that. And so basically valuation is all about finding the real value. Not that it's, um, it will also address the market value, but finding the real value, real book value as well. So valuation analysis is important as well. And cost approach is one of the famous approaches as well, like how much cost was uh, invested in the value of the assets, things like that. Um, so scenario, so you know some company makes higher profit by taking higher risks, whereas some company make lower profit by taking lower risks. Let's say over here company one might have taken lower risks and made lower profit, company might company two might have taken higher risks and made higher profit, you know. So, it, it, so sensitivity analysis was one of the main thing and scenario, scenario, you know, like how, in which scenario the company is operating. So scenario analysis, sensitivity analysis, like it's, it depends on the risks. So risk analysis, um, nowadays, you know, every measured kind of risks are calculated, even like natural calamities, like landslide and flood, like things like that. And like, um, like fire, fire insurance, fire risks, every, it's called uh, hazard and the probability of hazard, like how probable chances of having a fire and the losses, like calculation, probable chances of um, getting a loss by fire, how much loss the company could have and things like that, how much effect the company. So sensitivity analysis, scenario analysis is all about the scenarios, environment, and yeah, measuring about risks, everything. So you can search this on the internet as well. It address about such factor, and it's very important to do sensitivity and scenario analysis as well. If you are investing like very high amount of money, or, or if you are like, even if you are like opening a business, you have to consider this thing as well to be safe. And things like that, you know, like goal seeking data. T yeah, you can. Uh, variance means the difference. Like, for example, over here, you know, like 36 minus 52, the amount is a variance. Like, for example, 52 is the higher amount, so 36 minus 52 would be 16, yeah, 16,000. Um, that is the variance. Variance analysis. So it's also very important. And budget and yeah it's um, variance analysis is important for budgeting and forecasting for example like if um, if this is a f data of the same company let's say it's a data for company one no come I'll write now XYZ and it's like forecasted and this is like um, real so what I mean is, if there is a company called XYZ and the company has forecasted means budgeted. It's the same thing. You know? If the company has budgeted, that the company will do this this thing, they will earn this much of amount of money, and they'll do this, this, you know, for this this thing. But in real, after the end of that period of time, the company achieved this this thing. And there are you know, significant amount of difference. So if the difference is high, then that means the company did not do the nice budgeting so budgeting depends on the research if the company did high like high quality of research high research by considering everything like infl um, inflation and everything then the company could get accurate food purchase result you know there could be a little bit um, variance you know because of the environmental changes the, which could not be considered by the company or maybe some drastical changes but you know, like if the company cannot budget nicely, then it could be the one of the bad signs that the company is not good, or maybe the company is not good at budgeting or making a plan at all. all. Budgeting, so how good the plan, or how good the company can plan. So yeah, and the planning should be based on research as well. So yeah, budgeting and real and this is how the variance could be calculated and if the variance is high then there should be a reason why the why the variance variance was high 
and things like that yeah, and furthermore I forgot to tell you one thing like uh, horizontal analysis could be done on one company as well and like let's say XYZ company of year 2022 and this could be of year 2023 you know like um yeah for horizontal analysis we can say a company xyz um like which in which year the company did better like last year or this year or previous year or this year things like that you know you can do horizontal analysis of the same company or different company like company one and company two like i've already done this so uh, another thing to consider is that if we do horizontal analysis of two companies, these two companies should be of same industry. For example, if company one is a banking is in banking sector, the company two or company com two should be also uh, uh, should be a bank as well. We uh, we could compare like the company of different um, different industry, but that doesn't give like the good data so like yeah if company one is for banking and the company two is an insurance company then it doesn't sound good or maybe like investing company or something like that so both companies should be of same industry and it could give um, data which are really better better for analysis so variance analysis talk about forecast budget and finding variance and how well the company is doing and things like particularly for professional working and accounting finance department okay so this is how the variance analysis are considered and financial analysis best practices um the best practice include being extremely organized with data keeping all formulas and calculations as simple as possible okay making notes and comment in cells okay best practice um video explanation of types of financial analysis there's a video as well you know i'm not going to play over here right now where you can see you can watch on youtube additional resource okay that's it for this video um yep have fun